And you ask why it didn't happen with housing. Very good question. It's called market manipulation. It's called special interest group groups colluding together to fix prices because they all profit. They don't have to have a secret meeting. They all know which side their bread is buttered on. All the real estate investors and speculators and flippers and property managers and landlords, developers, contractors, real estate agents, lenders. They all make money when housing prices go up. And they put that burden on you and they call it a good thing. Well, it's the value. Uh, I'm worth more. And they'll say it's capitalism. It's anti-capitalism. At best, crony capitalism, which is already 180 degrees away from true capitalism. But I contend it's fascist because the government's involved. Okay, when they go against what is in the best interest of the American people at large, that's fascist. That's what we've got. Fascists, Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, socialists, and capitalists acting as fascists in lockstep with each other. Approving the bailout of 08 for a prime example. They're criminals, I'm telling you. They're genocidal freaks. They don't care how many people die. A lot of these elitist scum, they want people dead to save the planet, they'll tell you. Look at the Georgia Guidestones. They want to get the earth down to 500 million from the current 7.5 billion. What's that, over 90% of the people they want to wipe off the face of the earth? So if they, do you think they care if you suffer and die unnecessarily? from financial desperation they don't care believe me they don't care they're evil I'm telling you they're evil and we all got to get that through our heads fight these people oh my god I mean if we don't we're we're, we're partakers of it we're, we're collaborators in this I don't want to be with them I'll fight them with every fiber of my being. I don't want to be around these people. I don't want anything to do with them. I don't want anything to do with ill-gotten gain. Is that a little rigged game? Everybody can say, admit it. I don't want to play a rigged game, even if I win. Well, how evil are you? I want to be happy. I'm selfish. God is watching me. He knows my thoughts. He knows what's in my heart, my mind, my spirit, my soul. He knows my values. And above all, man, I just really, I know it's going to, I need one thing that uh, these evildoers can't help me with. And I need a beloved, you know, I know I can't personally be happy. I, I, I mean, I have never gotten over not having a sweet feminine creature, a female creature snuggling with me, cuddling with me. I want that, God Almighty, I'd turn down $100 billion for the woman of my dreams, to have the right woman, you know, I just, I'm so happy that I have right values, and you can too, ask God to give you right values, but I know that, that's one thing that I really want, I mean, besides fighting the good fight for God and for man, because that's it, we're all in this thing together, I crave, I crave a wife, I crave to be whole. I crave to snuggle and cuddle and um, to have and to hold her. That's something I just will never get over. I want that so freaking much. I know I would be such a nicer guy, such a much more content guy, such a different guy, such a happier guy. I want to be nice all the time. I'd like to be the nicest guy I've ever met, and I, I'm not feeling it, and I know I need that. But beyond that, I mean, you know, I can have her and I'll keep fighting the good fight, believe me. I'll keep speaking out vociferously in defense of the downtrodden. You know, but you see all the problems, all the jobs that revolve around the problem. How about all the people employed in the crime industrial complex? All the law enforcement officers. Good, noble people. I mean, you know, putting their lives on the line for you and me. Uh, we need them. We need rules and, and that's it. When people break them, we need people out there enforcing the law. You think the highway? I, I, if 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 people stop crashing the cars, the highway patrol would rejoice. They'd find another job. I mean, I, I'm not cynical about everything, but I'm just pointing out that this is crazy. The amount of money we spend on keeping people in jail, okay, 
compared to the amount we'd have to spend to keep them out of jail, how much less that would be. So I'm fiscally prudent. I'm fiscally conservative. Yet people call me a bleeding heart liberal. Because, oh, buy people houses with that Section 8 money? Well, wait, that's too liberal. We can't do that. Well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm talking about being fixing the problem and then washing your hands with it. That's it. Problem solved. It's over. Okay, you, you get it? So we start putting that $50 billion in our pockets instead of in the landlord's pockets and making the problem worse. So it's pure logic. It's not conservative or liberal. It, it, maybe it's both. Or, or, but most of all, greatest of all, it's logical. And this dubious war, I mean, we're not going to go to dubious wars if stop enticing these guys with financial, they would lose that power to entice them into the service <coughs> for financial gain because of the financial perks. No, a guy, a, any red-blooded American man worth his salt, he'll pay if he can afford to kill, kick Hitler's butt. Or he'll do it for bare bones, room and board, man. Yeah, you bet. You you put a you put an Uzi in my hand, you put a M16, whatever, man, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to blow his brains out without an ounce of compunction. I'll do it, and the people will, will praise me and hail me. When Johnny comes marching home, haru, haru. But uh, listen, my friends, um, there's plentiful, simple solutions. The evildoers don't want it, but you're going to get empowered. You're going to understand. Remember, you're dropping the bucket, true, but look at a spark. That's all it takes. You're a spark. Think of that. And what you say spreads like a fire, like a flame. You burn it on the whole fire. So we can all influence the influencers in very small ways. By speaking truth to power logically where they can't refute it. They say, wait a minute, this guy's right. I've been wrong. My thinking's been askew. I didn't even know I was evil. I was evil. My belief system was evil. My logic was ill logic, and I didn't even know it. I was on the highway to hell, and this person just saved my life. That's what you can do. That's what I can do. And it spreads. It's trickle up justice. Okay? Action. This is it. What we need to do. We need to parent these people. We need to be the highway patrol while they're careening down the highway into a fog bank and taking us with them and saying, don't worry, stock market's high. There's lots of jobs. Anybody that can't succeed in this America is, is just the loser. While the wealth imbalance keeps growing, fewer and fewer Californians can afford to be homeowners. Okay, more and more Californians are buying second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth. I mean, people own hundreds. I got a former father-in-law. I'm almost positive he owns literally thousands of dwellings in California. My former wife told me at one time he had bought up half of Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz, California. And you wonder why the prices go up? I mean, it's just like the, the diamond controversy. People, there's warehouses full of diamonds. Do you understand? We could all walk around with pockets full of diamonds. Okay, but they want it. They own them. They buy them all. And then they can regulate them back out on their terms. So they, it, it, they're control freaks to the max. You understand? It doesn't matter how many people are in on it, but they control the market. You understand what I'm saying about Calusa special interest groups? But we're not talking about trinkets like diamonds that nobody needs. We're talking about essential human needs people need to survive, to continue to exist. I mean, you think God's not concerned about these things I speak of? And these people collude, these special interest groups, to manipulate markets and fix prices. You see how outlandish, how outrageous it is, how anti-uncapitalistic this is. Unfree market, anti-free market, anti-supply and demand. Do you understand? So be very clear. Understand the issues here, my friends. Please. And I'm willing to sit down and do the math with you. There are solutions everywhere. But people don't want them. Their job security revolves around the problems persisting. It's so sick and sad and maddening, unnerving, insufferable, untenable madness. Please help me out here. Let's all do our fair share of carrying this cross, this burden. And if you're well healed and you don't need any help, do it for others. Remember what Christ said. Whatever you do or fail to do for the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. Is that the God you want to stand before and give account for your behavior or lack thereof? Well, friends, I think I'm going to get on to some um, 
talking points and uh, recent current events from this last uh, week. You know, I'd like to speak to um, the ladies out there. You know, if you've got a beloved, you know, and you should only have a beloved if you're giving him 100%. But I want to help you to try to understand him. You know, men are really pretty simple creatures. We really are pretty easy to please. But we're very discontent in a, in a world that's very frustrating to us. That's mad. You know, it's rife with madness. And if people don't understand the things I talk about uh, on an intellectual level, then intuitively they agree. They understand. You know what? I mean, just like, you know, JFK, they understand they were taken to these this new money. They understand this idea of sound currency. They like that. And it's like that. It's just... You know, guys can be understood if you don't, you know, if you just take them as a simple kind of creature, the simple animal they are. And they all kind of are romantics at heart. You know, they, they want a sweetheart. Um, they were all virgins at one time. They were innocent, sexually innocent. And I think back to that. That was the happiest time of my life when, you know, falling in love with a girl was just pure, purely pure. I mean... It was just so beautiful. You know, I didn't know anything about sex, nothing at all. But I knew one thing. I sure did like spending time with a girl. I just liked to snuggle her. I liked to kiss her. I liked to caress her hair. I liked to sm her smell because, I mean, you know, a lot of times they wear some nice perfume that went well with their chemistry. And I mean, you, you know, it was just such an attraction. It was so irresistible and such... A magnificent natural thing a godly instinct I mean that's how guys we're all like that and you know we all kind of want the virgin you know the purity right the a oh, female pure virgin you know we all want that pure young woman and you know we want we want to be in her life the Alpha and the Omega so really all guys in their right mind want one woman for life they want monogamy I mean I hear stories you know, I saw a court case where this one guy had four, four children and four different women. And I actually personally met a guy that had 11 children with eight different women. Okay. And believe me, I wasn't jealous. I feel sorry for the kids. I really do. I mean, they're going to get very little attention from their dad. Believe me. Situation like that. And probably, I mean, if the guy's not making gobs of dough, which a lot of them are, I mean, this guy ended up in court you know being sued for a few hundred bucks or some damn thing you know so it's like what are they going to do for their kids when they're doing that and and what about the woman you know the woman they say you know god ha hell hath no fury is a woman scorned and i believe that I i'll tell you what when i hurt, hurt my wife okay in the way i did by it, it had to do with infidelity okay i'm not going to go anymore it was wrong okay and you pay guys you will pay Okay, my wife made good damn and sure I paid. And I learned my lesson. And I needed to learn my lesson because I hurt her. And the irony is you couldn't have paid me enough to have jeopardized what love she had for me, okay, before I hurt her. What respect she had for me as a man, as the father of her children. Never, never. You understand? So, I mean, yeah, I, I, she got me good. Hell hath no fury as a woman scorn. I've paid heavily, heavily for a long, long time. Okay, and I'm telling you guys, look, there's a reason why girls rule, okay? It may not look like it, but that's a facade, this idea, well, the only, we've only had men presidents and all this crap. I mean, look at the guys that designed the chess game. Okay, uh, the queen, the one you do not want to lose, okay, is your queen because she's got the most versatility. She's got the most power, and she can, you know, go one way or the other. I mean, she can't move like the horse maybe, but uh, but she can like the bishop and the rook, right? And um, it's a very powerful piece that you want to keep. So you want to keep the queen in your life. She is the foundation of the family she's the baby maker women have the power because they are females you understand they are the life givers they possess the door of life it's that simple every man came out of a woman for a long long time right since 
Adam and Eve and all that, the story of creation. And women could literally extinct the species. We're not animals. We're like little gods. And unlike animals whom often will rape each other, right, the male of the species often will rape the female of the species in the animal kingdom. Men cannot do that, you understand? So we are at their mercy. If we want to mate, um, then it, if they all said no, guess what? The, spe the species goes extinct at their, the will of the female. So yes, women are certainly irrefutably more powerful.